what is it that you do, um, mm -hmm. especially for the youth? Where would you say the role of the parent comes into all of this? And people are shooting for the chicken coop. They're mm -hmm. like, let's mill around the chicken coop around here. We're not flying. We just want a safe little box <laughs> and contain us in here. Awesome. Well, welcome, Donovan. Uh, super excited to have you on the show. And my name is Todd Watson. For those of you just joining, and we are kicking it off with another episode of Unstoppable Preneurs. So yeah, Donovan, I, I, we connected right before this, and you said that you kind of, we connected through Ted McGrath years ago, which is super awesome. And you've got some really cool things. You've done a ton of sales calls. You've kind of gotten your own message, and now you're helping a ton of teams. So yeah, tell us a little about yourself and some of your passions and uh, your big mission in life. Yeah, I guess, you know, as you say that, I realize that it's just about being a father figure for me, you know, being that dad. And, uh, you know, I think back to my story of you know, my dad and mom got divorced when I was three years old. And I guess I've kind of always been that father figure forever. And, you know, being a helper as a school counselor first. And now, uh, as I think about my, my work as an entrepreneur, I just like being uh, that, that good role model that's actually out there helping people deal with the life stuff. So teenagers, you know, as a school counselor first and now in the entrepreneurial world, uh, I see that one of the big problems is we don't see how fast things are changing. And I love being on the leading edge of it. And, uh, you know, I, I was just telling you too about my own daughter kind of using some of the things that I've taught to some of my clients to actually get herself out there and create a platform online. And then the, the platform might go away. And what do you do if the platform goes away? And so it's all these kind of things I've heard about as I've helped other entrepreneurs and I've done it myself. And it's really fun to think about getting this next generation ready to take these cool tools that we have at our disposal and use them for good. I know, you know, a, a lot of people worry if there's parents in your audience, I know you've got the entrepreneurial audience and, you know, at, you could have kids like you from three months to, to eight years old, but they're going to hit those teen years at some point. And right now it's about making a good pre-impression. So what are you putting on your phone or on your profiles on purpose so that you're actually looking like a good, you know, upstanding person or a good professional. And so helping kids develop who they are, what they want to be in the world, and then actually create that platform for themselves and do their marketing is uh, really, really fun for me. And it's been a, a long journey to get there, uh, but it's really cool to even have some recent successes with my own daughter and some of my clients. So, so go expand on that a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about like, what is it that you do, um, mm -hmm. especially for the youth? And uh, what kind of problems are you solving and what results are you looking to provide for them? Yeah, one of the big problems is people don't know what to do when they grow up, so to speak. The age old question, what are you gonna do when you grow up? So I help kids answer that and they don't have to answer it by themselves. And they don't have to answer it for the next 30 years either. So I help actually with the planning, the preparations, and then most of all with the navigation. There's some big decisions to make during these teen years. There's some big transitions to make during the teen years. And so helping them navigate from basically like nest life to best life is, is what I say is, is a good representation of what I do. And they don't even know what a best life is. You know, I know you really believe in kind of a holistic approach and I do as well. So it's incorporating the lifestyle elements too. So if you're going to go out and figure out what you want to do when you grow up, well, that's great to know your career, but I love helping kids actually think about their values, their character, their um, beliefs, the things that they really want in their life, like in their health, their wellness, like you talk about within their, their social life, their relationships, their family life, really having this full picture to be planned out as they think about their, their future, not just what's the job I'm going to do. Um, you know, we don't even know if the job's going to exist by the kid goes from your, you know, your oldest kid at eight years old, by the time they hit 18, 22, there's going to be so many things that don't even exist yet. So I really love helping kids prepare for what they're going to do next after they leave the nest, go out there and start that adulting and then really do it well. You know, I think the entrepreneurial life and the leadership that's really needed for that is something that I, I really believe is important. And so that's really the, the gist of my program is helping install these skills that they really need for the real world. It's awesome. And where would you say the role of the parent comes into all of this? Yeah, when you're, when you're an entrepreneurial parent, I think you wish that your kid could get more of what you wanted earlier in life, and they can. You know, so I think that's, that's a piece of this is you can definitely 
uh, pull in your perspectives, your beliefs as a parent if you're an entrepreneur. If you're not, then you actually need to really look to get some people put in from the side to help support uh, opening your horizons and widen your horizons. So parents are a part of the support system. So I think one of the big problems we look at in the world is there's a lack of sufficient support systems for kids. So mm -hmm. the parents are part of that. And it's sort of like as kids get older and older and older, you go from fully dependent on dad and mom to a little less dependent, a little less. And then it's time to like release them and give them their freedoms, but not to just let them go totally free by themselves. But how do you actually help them build up that support system around them? Picking good peers. You can help have discussions around that. You can help them actually paint this picture of their future that they want. And then you can keep empowering them to kind of basically face plant a little bit. I don't think we let our kids try stuff. And then if it fails, like, that's okay. Let's do two thumbs up for, for epic failures. So I think helping them, you know, in, in the confines, the friendly confines of the family life before they get out of the nest, you can help them experiment, try things out and, and fail a little bit while you then can put your arm around them and, and dust them off after they, they face plant. So it's sort of this process of slowly releasing them to their independence, putting in those things that you want for their character, their beliefs, their values, and then installing the skills that you have that you can teach. And then when it's outside of your box, outside of the scope of what you can do, then it's really important to put some other people around them that can mentor and support them. That's super cool. When you think about like all that support, I'm curious how your journey from like learning sales stuff and doing what you're doing now, like how does that correlate? Do you find that there was stuff that you've pulled from doing a ton of sales and you know sucking at it, getting really good at it, to then helping youth find their vision and like what they want to create? Because in my mind, I'm like, selling <laughs> is helping people get their vision, overcome the obstacle, right? <laughs> Heck yeah. And so, uh, yeah, take us on that. Like, how are you, how do you bridge that? And like, what influence did that have on you being able to find this? Uh, yeah, I got a dare to dream download because people dream teeny tiny. They dream small. You know, like I think uh, Les Brown used to say, shoot for the moon and you end up amongst the stars. And people are shooting for the chicken coop. They're mm -hmm. like, let's mill around the chicken coop around here. We're not flying. We just want a safe little box <laughs> and contain us in here. I dream of like pecking at the ground, it seems like. So helping kids dream big is a big piece that I got from uh, what did not work in sales is the same thing. If that vision really wasn't exciting enough and I didn't feel inspired, it usually wasn't inspiring for them. And then same thing with uh, the, the pain points. If the pain points really weren't hitting it, then they wouldn't really take action. So I say you really have to paint a big why, a big dream, and that gets people motivated and excited. And let's do that younger so that they're younger pups that can learn those new tricks. And then, uh, you know, when you're digging into those pain points, sometimes people don't want to face the realities. If kids have, you know, certain strengths, those are easy to pour into. But if they have those things that really need to be beefed up and boosted up, sometimes people won't be honest with them. So a little tough love is what a coach can bring to the table. And uh, I see that, like, those are some of the big things. And uh, what else? Oh, decision making. I just, I would get a really, you know, I knew I did my absolute best with sales and people would waffle or procrastinate. Mm. So I actually put in decision-making as one of my core steps of my program. And the first time I taught it was with parents and kids together in a group session. And I go, all right, Johnny, you're, you're showing up to a, a stay at your friend's house and you get dropped off by mom, but you open the door and there's like kegs of beer in front of you. And they're maybe doing drugs in the other room. What do you do, Johnny? And the kid goes, I walk in and his mom's jaw just dropped. And she's like, what kind of a decision is that? This is good decision making week in this program. What are you talking about? That's a terrible decision. What are you thinking? He's like, well, they, they've seen me. They opened the door. They've seen me. You've driven away. I got to go in. He's like, no. He's like, I'll make good decisions. I'll, I'll, they'll, I'll let them do their thing and I'll be nice. I'll be a good little boy. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is good. So these big decisions, these life altering decisions, sometimes people just can't make them. And so I think that's one of the things I wanna help kids do earlier as well is become a really good decision maker because it really makes a difference on like not doing something big and bold and like a big dream or just like settling in life for something that could get you into trouble or, or at least just a sort of lane. That's awesome. One of the my favorite things, my wife actually and I used to run uh, youth retreats and uh, taught youth leadership skills and techniques and stuff. Yeah. And one of our favorite things was putting them through simulations, which is basically scenarios, like you're saying, 
and having them make difficult decisions. Mm -hmm. And I think too often in life, we, uh, if, if we live too sheltered, then we don't really have the opportunity to make decisions. And the great thing is, is we can learn even just by putting ourselves in scenarios of going back to what you're saying, like our core principles, like what values do we rely on? How would we make those decisions? Where does those, uh, you know, what, when is the line align and when do you cross it? And helping youth and even adults need <laughs> decision making, but how to actually make powerful decisions. I, I think that's an awesome mission. mission. So uh, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, Super cool. Right. So let's say if there was one thing that you could teach to a parent or someone listening to this that they could do right now to help their youth, just one little thing that you find across the board that you know, could make a difference as a parent to their youth, what would that thing be? Yeah, I would say the, the dreaming bigger. So if we circle back to the, the dreaming small and just helping them dream big, it's kind of hard. Like, what do you want to do? The answer is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've never been older than this. I really don't know what it's like to be a grown up and an adult. So you get the I don't knows, but what's helpful is to then help them get specific. So what would you want for your health and fitness? What would you want for your social life? What would you want in a partner? What would you want in a family? What would you want for finances? So it doesn't just have to be what's the career you want or what's the job. There's all these other specific areas of life that are really helpful for a kid to start to paint that picture. And even, you know, I, I do an exercise with kids to help them create a vision board. So those are powerful, powerful things to do with a kid. And if they, you've never done that as a parent, or if you just get lost with, ah, oh, you're stumped by, I don't know, and you give up as soon as they say, I don't know. One of the reasons why is we're not helping them get specific. So I would say, have that conversation to help them dream big, but don't have it just be kind of fluffy and esoteric and adult-like. Yeah. Bring it down to the granular stuff of like what we, what we actually can, you know, see here, feel, touch. It's like those things that are regular parts of life that, that that's help great. Guide that discussion. Yeah. So it's it's fascinating because when you ask vague questions, we get vague answers. So it's totally. like, what do you want to do when you grow up? I don't know. That's a really vague <laughs> question. But yeah. I loved how you started to articulate some of those very specific questions yeah. to read specific answers. So huge. exactly. That's awesome. Well, um, if people wanted to follow you or tune into more what you're doing, what's the best way that they can connect with you, Donovan? Yeah, I, I think the, my primary place on social is Facebook. So Donovan Dreyer too, I think. So just look me up on on Facebook. And then if you wanted to get on my website, it's getreadycoaching.com and the Dare to Dream downloads right there for that. Sweet. Well, thank you so much. Any last words before we end? I appreciate you, Tyler. I appreciate you having me on yeah. here. It was kind of cool to have that full circle moment and uh, to, to reconnect with you. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak into your uh, potential parents in the entrepreneurial world and, and the entrepreneurship side. I think a lot of these things really are pulled from, from what works well for entrepreneurs as well. Um, so hopefully that benefited your audience. So I really appreciate you and thank you. Yeah. Thanks everybody for joining us. And yeah, that one takeaway, if, if at the very least, ask specific questions. And I think that can apply to all areas of life, not just parenting but get very specific on your questions so you can get very specific answers. Hey, what's up? If you want to get access to learn the full process of how to change at a cellular level, click the link in the description. I actually have created a way for you to get access to the Unstoppable Preneur School for free so that you can check it out on a trial so you can experience these changes for yourself. So if you wanna learn more, if you wanna dive deeper, if you wanna go through some of the coolest processes on the planet and the fastest hacks, click the link in the description and we'll see you on the other side. Was it me? No, it was each and every one of you. So we all chose to do that. No one forced you, no one made you, you chose, which is freaking awesome.